good morning everybody uh, good afternoon everybody today i am going to tell about craniospinal irradiation the practical aspects and uh, 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 how to plan uh, at the end of my presentation i will do the plannings uh, i will show the plannings so what is this actually craniospinal irradiation is a total neuro axis radiation we have to treat the brain hunts for spine that uh, that includes css spaces like brain spine cranial nerves and spinal nerve roots so why is this because some diseases like medulloblastoma germ cell tumor anaplastic ependymoma pinnates pinioblastoma cns neuroaxis mets that has a high propensity to csf spread if there is a csf spread then we have to treat all the neurospire neuroaxis irradiation so who has given this concept uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Edith Peterson, who has uh, um, uh, developed this concept uh, long before, and we are following uh, is uh, her four steps, and uh, we are uh, optimizing your plans with the um, advance of the technology. So this is the first article uh, by uh, Edith Peterson. You can go through this as article to know the history and evolution. So let's see uh, discuss about the medulloblastoma. Medulloblastoma is the most common malignant brain tumor of childhood. The most commonly present is the midline mass, roof of the fourth ventricle. Treatment typically consists of surgical resection followed by radiation therapy. Need of concurrent and adjuvant chemotherapy with the uh, and prognosis strongly influenced by surgical resection, CSM metastasis at the diagnosis. 2021 updated WHO classification. Uh, includes the molecular subgroups. The radiography features are strongly influenced by the surgic histological type and molecular subtype of the tumor. So, uh, you see, uh, uh, this is the uh, um, uh, uh, usually we treat in the medulloblastoma mostly the evolved process is the prone position. So, how the medulloblastoma looks like? Mostly, it is a posterior process tumor. And the CT, it looks like a hyperdense picture. And uh, um, uh, if you give contrast, de depending on the contrast enhancer, starting from the PG enhancement to the uh, uh, more enhancement, it uh, depends upon the tumor. And you can see this is the posterior fossa tumor with uh, cystic and solid component, and solid component is uh, um, uh, enhancement with uh, septations. And this is the midline uh, medulloblastoma where you can see this is the PG enhancement. Uh, and uh, uh, and this is the uh, again it is a type of um, uh, um, uh, posterior fossa uh, posterior fossa um, um, metal plasma with enhancement again it is you can see t2 it is mostly hyper and hyper intense t2 player you will see the uh, aspects of the edema how much edema it will be there Mostly the tumors are uh, medulloblastomas are, are the highly aggressive tumors. So in diffusion, uh, oh, uh, diffusion, uh, diffusion uh, images, it will be uh, restricted. So in the diffusion weighted image, you will see the restricted uh, diffusion restriction because of the higher malignancy. And you can see the corresponding, uh, the, you can see the left side is the diffusion weighted image which shows uh, hyper intense and in corresponding ADC map looks black. Perfusion scan, again, it is a high malignant in nature. So that's why uh, 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 yeah, um, malignant, malignant in nature and then you may feel the high perfusion. Uh, is, is it audible? Hello? Yes, audible. After you are audible. Okay. So, though uh, there is a modified chunks staging is the mostly useful staging um, uh, long back and uh, it is divided into stand, uh, standard risks and high risk. In standard average uh, risk is the uh, more, mostly three years, more than three years old, less than 1.5 centimeter residual disease no craniospinal uh, spread but high risk pictures it is uh, high risk category is the less than three years old subtotal resection and uh, more than 1.5 centimeter residual tumor m plus disease is yeah. leptomeningeal seedling and location of outside the posterior fossa risk reduction again as i told uh, standard risk is the more than three years less, um, um, less than 1.5 centimeter metastatic spread and high risk tumor three years of age with evidence of csf spread and uh, less than three years of a diagnosis 
So coming to the molecular um, um, diagnosis, um, there are four groups mostly, wind groups, SH, uh, um, uh, SNIC, uh, uh, Herzog pathway, group three and group four. Mostly uh, wind group is the uh, mostly low risk group and other things, I am not going much molecular things in uh, here because I am going to the pra mostly the practical uh, experts. But I, radio genomics, if you see, most of the wind group is the mostly the, um, the CP angle um, uh, type of tumor. And uh, if you go those senic herzog pathway uh, molecular group is mostly midline, uh, mostly uh, posterior posa, SN um, uh, lateral edge, and G, uh, group three, group four, mostly it is uh, centralized and uh, um, uh, uh, um, mostly central tumors. So uh, you can um, uh, um, predict which molecular group uh, in the radio genome, uh, radiology, and uh, um, you can see group three groups are very uh, mostly midline and highly enhanced. But uh, it is not always directly uh, to the uh, molecular. But whatever maybe you can uh, predict in the radiology. It may you may get it in the uh, molecular things is the final uh, diagnosis. So if you this simple algorithm for the less than three years of age, you can, should go for the chemotherapy alone. And more than three years of age you, um, uh, uh, alone, and followed by CSI when patient uh, eighteen uh, the um, uh, uh, three years old, you can go for the CSI. If the standard risk stratification, negative CSI, no micrometastasis, less than 1.5 centimeter respiratory tumor size, you can go for 23.4 gray CSI, followed by uh, boost till 55.8 gray or and plus chemotherapy. But if it is a high risk uh, stratification, positive CSI, micrometastasis, more than 1.5 centimeter square residual tumor size, you have to go for the 36, uh, 35 gray uh, to the total CSI followed by 55.8 till 50.58 gray, you have to um, go boost and chemotherapy. Surgical principles, routine preoperative pre ventricular peritoneal sun should not be done. It has a high chance of CSA pass spreading the pathway. You should not go to the VP sun uh, before, but uh, <coughs> and uh, it also causes reverse herniation, um, um, herniation uh, superhermes into the quadrigeminal system. If there is a um, sim, uh, maybe deemed uh, CSF diagnosis uh, deemed necessary for symptomatic relief, you can go for a delay in definitive surgery. S um, best you can do endoscopic third ventriculostomy um, drainage. If CSF diversion not being considered medical decompressive therapy like uh, dexamanitol, we can give steroid choice. You can give uh, uh, steroid choice. Uh, choice is uh, dexamethasone. Complete sur surgical removal should be. Tried. So mostly VP sun should not be tried uh, unless there is a no other uh, thing is there. Uh, it causes reverse herniation and the CSF spread. Best is the endoscopic third ventriculostomy and then <laughs> chemotherapy is needed when there is a adjuvant chemotherapy following RT. Adjuvant chemotherapy following surgery in infant medulloblastoma is less than three years. Pre irradiation, pre irradiation chemotherapy in infant medulloblastoma to differ reality till three years. High dose chemotherapy with autologous stem cell rescue and concurrent chemotherapy in the uh, radiation, salvage therapy when there is a recurrent medulloblastoma. So, these are the chemotherapy um, um, uh, need of in the, in the medulloblastoma chemotherapy. So, uh, so, adjuvant chemotherapy, you can go for the various uh, regimens. Uh, uh, I am not uh, much chemotherapy, medical uh, chemotherapy, uh, going to chemotherapy. So, these are the various regimens you can uh, discuss with your medical oncologist and you can plan. Concurrent chemotherapy, mostly people use uh, weekly vincristine and some um, uh, few people also use concurrent carboplatin and uh, uh, concurrent carboplatin shows superiority and um, uh, best uh, uh, manageable acute toxicity and um, uh, routine practice. Then what is the mostly radiation principle? Whole neuroaxis radiation followed by tumor bed burst is the standard. Children below three years need chemo till three years and need radiation after that. So, the main thing comes the target delineation. So, target delineation in craniosmile and irradiation is very important. It is the you have to when you are going to targeted um, targeted uh, like BMAT um, or IMRT or some tomotherapy, you have to contour properly. In the contour craniosmile whole brain radiation, you have to do the creviform plates, skull base, cranial knobs, foraminas, you have to contour properly. And spine, entire subarachnoid space to encompass the extensions along the knob roots laterally has to contour. 
Posterior fossa boost or tumor bed boost is for your choice and it's for the institutional practice you have to do. Since the entire CSF is the risk of disease disease, the entire subarachnoid space is defined as the CTV. So you, you can see this is a target delineation with the treatment, how the, um, uh, how the um, um, uh, CSI planning looks like. So, uh, very good article by our ISNO group, uh, Dr. Tejpal Gutta Jalali, sir. You can go ahead this article step by step. They have a, uh, guided very nicely. Guideline two, you can go for the SIOP contouring guideline uh, to for the target delineation. Uh, you can go for the RO case, practical metalloblastoma. You can go ahead with that. And uh, imaging protocol. So, what should we do for when the, uh, we are going for the CSI? From the vortex to mid thigh, you have to take, take the CT. MRI spine, you have to take in the T2 to understand the where it the, because CSF looks wide in that you can see the, where the uh, termination of spinal cord and where it the termination of uh, um, um, uh, um, subarachnoid space you can find out. MRI brain should be done with a Fiesta sequence T1, FSPG, T2 to know, Fiesta sequence to know the cranial nerves where the CSF uh, uh, areas we can see. D1 contrast, you have to see um, uh, for the any residual lesion or something. And 1 mm to 1 to 3 mm slice, we have to do. So these are the uh, SIOP guidelines. We have to uh, contour the total brain at least 1 centimeter below to give the pivot below pivot plum plate and at least 1 centimeter below the base of skulls. We have to give to proper contouring of the uh, proper inclusion of the uh, 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 proper inclusion of the skull base or phenomena. Extended laterally to cover the intervertebral spine, you have to contour the total spinal canal, not the spinal cord, on spinal canal, and you have to contour the spinal foramina, uh, intervertebral foramina, where the nerves uh, travel, you have to contour entire nerves, I will tell you. Some uh, um, uh, 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 COG protocol also slightly, uh, some uh, differences you can, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, you can uh, go ahead also, but, but uh, we should at least you include both foraminas and uh, um, you have to go to below two centimeter of the terminus of cerebral space. So, where we are really missing the targeting things. So we have to contour the pacing target to the privy plum pet. You have to contour this area. And you can it can be best visible in the city window level 3000 and width, width 3000 and uh, level 400. So this is the area where the olfactory knobs and uh, the um, brain with entire frontal lobe, uh, so frontal lobe uh, to be from plate has to be contoured this olfactory below. So properly contour this area to get this the chance of missing. Another missing area is the lower part of the temporal lobe. You have to contour this way. We should not miss this area, uh, the temporal lobes. Another contouring area is the foramina. Like uh, this is the foramina lacerum. This is the sorry, foramina um, ovale, foramina spinosum, foramina rotundum, and this is the foramina lacerum. We have to uh, take the base skull, uh, base skull. Uh, in a uh, uh, base skull in a uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, bone windows and contour all these areas properly so that you should include all these foramina. Missing target in the foramina because uh, the mostly foramina uh, skull foramina they uh, travel the cranial nerve roots. This nerve roots we should uh, contour the all foramina like starting from the cribiplum plate, optic foramen, uh, ethmoidal foramen, sorry, foramen uh, uh, ovale, foramen spinosum, from lacerum, internal acoustic meatus, uh, all things you have to contour properly and uh, at least 0.5 mm, uh, 1 centimeter margin to give the uh, things to cover the uh, CSF spread. Mostly, um, there are lots of confusions whether to take whole optic nerve or circle canal. I will come by one by one. Uh, um, uh, so, um, CSF extends beyond the table, uh, 16 mm internal acoustic matters and jugular foramen 1.1 1, 1, 1 mm. So, if you see, this is the uh, inter, you can see this is called Fiesta sequence, other name is uh, C sequence. You can see this is a cochlea and uh, how it looks so nicely. And this is contains the uh, uh, um, internal acoustic meatus. And you can see you have to contour all these areas. 
uh, in your sun. So these are the various uh, foraminous like PV from plate, optic canal, superior orbital phaser, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, internal auditory matrix, sugar nut phenomenon, hypoglossal and nerve. These are the various foramens we have to contour. These are the various nerves which traverse this foramen. And these are the anatomical descriptions how to identify and everything. So this is a practice. If possible, I will show you how to identify this all foramenus. Mostly, uh, um, uh, in older concept, you have to treat all the optic nerve track um, um, uh, till the globe. CS of tracks optic nerve reaching up to the back of the globe. So, majority of the expert pediatrician in favor of including whole optic nerves in the CTP. So, uh, um, always include the total optic nerve. CTP trigeminal, if you go for the uh, Gessian ganglion, if possible, go to the uh, tri follow the trigeminal nerve and TNT, this is Gessian ganglion, you have to contour that area also and you should not miss that area and contour that area and give the margin. As I told, internal acoustic matters, you can see how cochlea so nicely, this is a fiesta sequence. You can see this nerves, this is CSF, how it is go towards the internal acoustic matters. You have to contour uh, um, uh, properly. Just one minute. So uh, we have to contour this internal acoustic matters and uh, 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 um, uh, uh, contour the uh, and give the margin. So people try think of trying cochlear sparing. Never uh, never attempts to spare the cochlea. It should be within the um, 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 uh, your CTB. Like uh, this is the jugular foramen where ninth and tenth nerve is there. You should con uh, contour this tenth and ninth nerve and include the entire area to uh, that jugular foramen uh, to contour. And uh, this CTV, then again, this is a hypoglossal canal for the hypoglossal nerve. Again, you have to contour this area to give the CTV around this. You have to contour all these foramen. This is optic nerve, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, foramen internal acoustic meatus, jugular foramen, and this is hypoglossal. These are all foramen. Don't forget to contour and give at least one centimeter margin around the emu. And this is how this looks like after contouring. You can give after giving this, you have to contour, uh, you have to give one centimeter to this all these foramen. Apart from that, some people are thinking, we shall we spare the pituitary? Never spare the pituitary during CSI, but you can, uh, you, you should spare the pituitary during the boost planning. So you have to con uh, control the total pituitary fossa uh, should be included in the, uh, 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 in the tract. CTV spinal canal. So uh, when you are contouring the spinal canal, always contouring the bone window, because you will see the interventricular intra, uh, intra, um, um, uh, vertebral foramens and the laterally, you should contour all these interventrival uh, interventrival uh, foramens. If you don't contour, you have a high chance of missing the dorsal and ventral nerve roots. So, uh, confusion about the sacral canal, uh, sacral nerve roots. So, sacral canal uh, again, uh, it is shown that the sacral canal, um, uh, no, uh, CSF around the sacral nerve roots, not canal. I am telling sacral nerve roots, there is no CSF around it. So therefore, not included in the CTV spinal. Previously, we used to the, give the uh, spread field, but no spread field is required. You can go with the direct uh, uh, cylindrical field uh, as per the requirement. So you have to see, um, but uh, if you do includes also, it is not wrong, but it depends upon the uh, your uh, 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 your clinical practice. So how to uh, identify the uh, spinal cord end? So you can go, uh, you can see, you can take the T2, uh, T2 uh, um, a sagittal image. You can see how the spinal canal terminates here around the level of uh, L2. So this is, uh, you have to find, uh, you have to find out a uh, sagittal uh, uh, section and you can uh, go for the uh, nerve ending. Like that, you have to find the lower border of thickal sac you can see here uh, how it uh, in sagittal section it shows the sagittal the thickal sec ends uh, 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 where thickal ends. 
So uh, when, if sometimes we are not able to find the thickal sac properly, whether proper or not proper MRI, or we are planning the based on the most CT, placing inferior border of radiation field at the middle of the S3 vertebra would be help to cover in almost all cases. Uh, so if you are not uh, at, um, um, properly identifying the um, lower border of thickal sac or uh, uh, S3, then you um, place uh, your uh, lower border at the middle of the S3 vertebra. So this is the um, spinal CT must be detained by uh, imaging lower limit of the thickal set and uh, inferior treatment should be at least, if you are going for the finding out the uh, thickal set, at least go one centimeter below the thickal set. Then I am telling about the vertebra, mostly it is the posterior spine, this is the uh, transversus, this is the pedicle, this is the vertebra. So, so this is the um, uh, vertebral um, anatomy, this is called as intervertebral foramen. So this area has to be included in your uh, CTV, if you don't include, you are uh, not treating properly, so you have to include those uh, intervertebral foramen. So this is the intervertebral foramen, uh, intervertebral foramen, you should go for the contouring and this area. So this is the how the nerve roots laterally is coming out. So this is the, uh, this thing has to be included. So mostly if you don't have a plan, not planning 3D or contour based plan, you have to go for the, in SSD plan at least, give the um, um, uh, uh, one centimeter, um, uh, width of the vertebral body plus one centimeter include the intervertebral foramen. So one, uh, at least uh, um, lateral to the one centimeter you should include to the, include the intervertebral foramen uh, to uh, pra practice the, um, uh, um, to, uh, if you are not uh, practicing the 2D. So what should be the PTV margin? PTV margin should be based on the departmental data. Most situations, institutions use uh, 5 mm to the CTV brain. And mostly people use eight um, uh, point uh, around one centimeter to the uh, CTB spinal uh, uh, canal. So how it looks like uh, MRI cranial field, uh, sorry MLC with cranial field. You are doing the cranial field, and you can see uh, at least you can include one centimeter below the uh, 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 the foramen. Timing of radiation after uh, the surgery, at least uh, give uh, two to three weeks for the uh, recovery and neuroaxis, proper neuroaxis staging. And uh, overall treatment should not be exceed more than 15 days, but not more than eight, eight weeks. Treatment interruption during the RT undesirable should be avoided as, as far as the practical. Mostly pre-radiation investigation, you have to go for full MRI brain and spine till mid thigh. CF, uh, CSF study for the malignant cells we have to do. This there are two staging criteria we have to do. So imaging in post-op, after the uh, surgery, within 24 to 48 hours, to accurately identify the extent of resection of quantity of peripheral disease, you can go for the, after 24 hours, 48 hours, you can go for MRI. If you have not obtained the neuroimaging after it, uh, on, uh, within 48 hours, you go uh, wait for three to three weeks, and within four weeks, you should do the total neuroaxis imaging. If screening of spinal imaging not done before the um, uh, surgery, better do the screening of spinal surgery, spinal. And uh, uh, once again, it is recommended to wait for two to three weeks after surgery to the conf prevent confusion about the uh, uh, artifacts. CSF studies should be done lumbar, by lumbar puncture. And we did at least two, two to three weeks after the surgery to avoid false positivity about the artifact, um, um, uh, any blots in the spinal fluid. CSF obtained by a ventricular top is not, um, um, not um, su suitable for the neuroaxis staging. And, uh, and MRI and CSF, which should be done first. Always when you are coming to the practice, you should go for the MRI should done be first. CSF study should be done as a letter. Because if you do CSF study by lumbar puncture, when a sagittal picture you do the MRI, uh, then there will be artifact. At least if you don't do the CSF study first, then go for MRI. If CSF is a uh, study done before, then at least one wait one to two weeks uh, uh, after uh, uh, surgery after a CSF study to do an MRI. So you can see here the uh, MRI drop mats. You can see in the sagittal picture how the looks at uh, the enhancement patterns in the, this you can see these are the enhancement patterns here. These are the uh, drop mats in the CSF. Whether uh, people are con getting confused whether we should uh, start supine or bone. 
prone is more uh, older method and uh, mostly supine is the subject comfort prone is the physician comfort so prone is the physician comfort in that way when you can see the junctions with the some junction matchings you can see nicely so well, which plan has to be done 2d or 3d or r 2d is the crude method you can do if nothing is available if it is uh, 3d is available you do contour and do the better plan if it is a arc better uh, you can go ahead with uh, arc plan or comma plan why so special why csig is so special because the total length of this craniospinal mostly we have a field size of 40 to 40 cm in the linear but uh, uh, total length is more than 80 to 100 cm the total craniospinal so we have to put two to three junctions uh, one to two junctions but for the two different fields and the cranial uh, brain fields like cranial fields we should keep laterally and uh, spinal fields usually mostly uh, single uh, anterior beam so this is the thing how you do so mostly where is the problem so mostly lateral cranial field and spinal field mostly uh, you do the anterior beam so the always there is a con con confusion about the beam matching or over dosing in this area when there is a con uh, if you um, match with uh, if you overlap with there is a high dose and high dose in the spinal cord if you give extra gap you will find the uh, 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 you will find the under dose to that area so what is our aim we should go for the homogeneous dose to the target and less dose to the oer and better to go for the less integral dose mostly you will go for the bmart and uh, you go for the tomotherapy you will get the most integral dose so the prone position uh, let the discuss about the prone position uh, this is the prone position we have to uh, do the prone position how you would do uh, so when you are doing for the prone position at least you draw a laser line central line and the uh, you mark it in the your uh, mask and align properly along the tip of the spinous process till the uh, coccyx this is the very important and the on the uh, uh, mask it is the totally uh, laser alignment followed by uh, you have to the laser should on the tip of the spinous you palpate with your finger the tip of the spinous process you should do, do that Yeah, one thing it is uh, whether we should cut the hair or uh, it is unnecessary or necessary because when there is a matching issues come we usually have a 2 to 3 mm uh, or 5 mm uh, junction matching is there after giving the few radiations you may the patient may lose hair so that uh, there may be a uh, loss of uh, there may be a, uh, error and a mask get loose so always we i prefer to get uh, among um, uh, clean shape Uh, of the scalp before going for the uh, radiation so this is the uh, patient how uh, this is the prone headrest these are the called prone headrest and uh, various positions how it is comfortable and uh, um, positioning to type the shape the eye dose and when there is an anesthesia the kids are there you have to have a prone position and a prone uh, those requiring anesthesia during the treatment in the around 3 years 4 years old they are not uh, uh, helping uh, though you can have a oxygen uh, Uh, mom tube we can put in, uh, in this way sometimes people are getting discomfort around the coronal uh, um, uh, ear area you can cut it and um, uh, in the bilateral um, auricular area and uh, these things we when you are going for the setup there should not be gap in between the skull and the orbit and the shoulder and the orbit so these are the two points where you should not have, always when you are going for the setup if you this setups not done properly you may miss the junction problems and sometimes it overlap and everything so always see this junctions very important uh, uh, um, uh, there should not be any gap so sometimes uh, people uh, use the thermocal wedge when the to align uh, horizontally or uh, uh, i use the, uh, i usually use total thermocal to um, Play, uh, play, put uh, alignment properly, and you see your laser point. So a laser uh, should go uh, that marker what I shown before along the tip of the spine process from the top to bottom. It should be aligned properly. If you uh, see uh, the uh, patient in the prone, you put a hair band or elastic band. Keep the uh, legs are proper in the position, so it is very nice to uh, if you get a proper alignment. so if you are confined to the supine you can use back lock and ma definitely mask is required 
uh, for the head and two masks can use and uh, even one mask is sufficient as per your convenient. As you know, the portals mostly whole brain, two parallel opposite fields and upper spine direct posterior field, lower spine direct posterior field, mostly four to six MB lina or cobalt is sufficient. How to fix the junction? So junction means, as you know, I told cranial field, spinal field junction is a very problematic. So we have to play with gantry, rotation, cause rotation, collimation. And these rotations, uh, we should shift daily or weekly. Usually that is called feathering. Uh, weekly is better. The, the daily is more exhaustive. exhaustive. So always uh, try to fix the junction. Suppose this is the cranial field, this is the spinal field. If they, definitely there will be a hot spot in this area. So how to do that? So there is a call, this, you have to collimate this field. This is the cranial field, we, have to, we should collimate to make the parallel and maintain a gap. So this is... Uh, uh, so sagittal section, you should match with that. And uh, how to fix the collimation, how much rotation you have to keep? This is the how rotated uh, angle, usually 10 degree uh, collimation is sufficient to the match the field. Usually you can see if you cranial field, spinal field, how it is, uh, you can see collimator is zero degree here. Sorry, uh, sorry, there is slightly glitch. Uh, beam overlap and corrections you have to do. You can see um, the collimation is zero here, uh, and uh, there is an overlap uh, between the um, lateral field and the spinal field. And if you give collimation um, 10 degree, you can see in the up, uh, one zero degree here, zero degree here, and if you give 10 degree collimation, there will be proper match and there is a 10 centimeter, 1.5 centimeter gap. So this is called beam matching, how to give the beam correction. But it is looks like in a sagittal section that beam matching. If you go, so how to fix the junction? So you have to give, um, you can see uh, this is the um, zero degree rotation, there is an overlap. If you give 10 degree, there is a um, matching and you give the gap. So 10 degree rotations, usually collimator rotation, uh, uh, sorry, so uh, this is the collimator rotation, but when you are going for the, you do, when you are see, seeing the sagittal section, it is a, it is a match, but you have to see in the coronal section. Coronal section, again, it is a um, uh, overlap. If you, coronal section, it is overlap, then you have to go for the couch rotation. So couch rotation, you give 10 degree and give some gap. So this is called a couch rotation. So you have to do collimator rotation and a couch rotation. You can see when uh, zero degree is there, there is overlap. When they give 10 degree and some gap, it is the so you have to see the matching in the sagittal section as well as the coronal section. So uh, how to fix the junction? One uh, uh, first you come fuse with a cranial uh, rotation 350 degree in the left. You can see you can give the gap. So couch rotation is very needed. In the uh, you have to see in the coronal section. So here we can see here, if you see the coronal section, you can see the couch angle is zero, there is a overlap. If you give zero degree, uh, some 10 degree, it will be matching and there is a gap. So this couch rotation and you have to give. Let's see how it again, it happens. So uh, this is the uh, cranial field, this is the spinal field, and this is the couch rotation. You can see this is the couch rotation. 
So, how much gout rotation? Yeah, uh, at least uh, six to ten degree usually um, possible when you are not planning with three D. But uh, as a, uh, when you are planning with the three D plan or uh, uh, beam matching uh, in uh, practicality, you can uh, you have to do couch angle. So, some people ask, can I use the half beam block when there is no matching is required? You can do the half beam. Yes, you can do the half beam block. So, if you see another cranial field and this is the spinal field overlap. So, if you uh, you, uh, if this is a full open field, you can decrease the half beam. So, this will be half beam block. You can uh, uh, junction also, it is possible. So, yeah, uh, if, but uh, half beam block, it is more total field came as to 20, 20, but the field size is less. So, when the small kids, um, uh, you can use the high beam blocks also possible. When your length is more, you need another spinal field to cover the area. So, you will, if you give this spinal field, you will get a cold area. And anteriorly around the abdo bowel wall, you will get the hot triangle. So non isosceles. So what do you have to do? Then you have to get this is called gap calculation. So this gap calculation uh, very tricky. And if this is the gap calculation formula. So uh, field S one and field S two have uh, depth S S D one. You have to call. Uh, you can go put the formula and then find the gap between these two uh, pins. So this is uh, uh, you can go. But if you are not interested about the calculation uh, things, you don't want to go. You can uh, another thing you can the spinal spinal field how will you match? This is called uh, uh, gantry couch moment in craniospinal gantry as a collimator couch moment. But in uh, spinal spinal you have to do the con gantry and uh, couch moment. How to do? So, so you can see this is the couch moment. So this is the um, uh, you can see here. Um, uh, gantry is 0 here, collimator 0 and the couch is 90. You have to make the couch 90 and if you see now the couch, uh, if you want to match the um, gantry is um, uh, 345. So, they, you can um, see the matching, uh, beam to beam matching. So, uh, again I am telling you how to do. So, if it is a spine, spine, uh, two spinal fields are there. You need the gap calculation. If you don't want to get a gap calculation, you can go for the country rotation and couch rotation. Couch should be 90 degree here, and you have to create, rotate the country till 33, 45, 3, 44 as per your uh, requirement. So this is the called country couch plane. So this is the how uh, 90 degree couch with country rotation 345 degree. It is not in the zero degree. We're playing with the country rotation and couch rotation. So, how many junctions required? Each beam is 40 centimeter. Uh, keep the, so if you junction, um, you have to see the junction shift, you have to keep 3 centimeter uh, extra ma ma margin for the junction shift. Usually, so in our hand, it is a 30 centimeter, 37 centimeter. If 40 centimeter um, patient is there, 40 centimeter, you can use half beam blocks and it is very rare, it's small, unless there is small kit. 74 centimeter, you need one junction, more than 74 centimeter, two junctions. If you have the craniospinal length is 74 centimeter, you can play with one junction. If more than 74 centimeters, you have to play with two junctions. Uh, there is a, some background uh, disturbance, please uh, take care. Uh, so, when you are doing the junction shift, you have to do is some contouring around the junction 1, junction 2, junction 3. So, first you have to go by junction 1, then junction 2, then junction 3. So, every 7 days you try to shift. Like the spinal, spinal junction, you have to spinal junction 1, spinal junction 2, spinal junction 3. So, you have to, every time you have to increase 1 centimeter, decrease cranial 1 centimeter. Next, uh, again increase spinal field 1 centimeter, decrease uh, cranial 1 centimeter. So, this thing is to be done. So, this junction 1, junction 2, junction 3, uh, you have to do. So, let's see uh, how to put the junction. So, craniospinal field should be put in that way. The spinal field should not directly go to the oral cavity or thyroid, but cranial field should get a good shoulder clearance, lateral field. So, in adults, two fields required craniospinal and spinospinal junctions. Usually two spinal required if there is a length is more than six centimeter. Junction between two spinal generally placed at L2, L3. If there is a, uh, if there is a uh, patient length is more, uh, then you can put a junction at L2, L3 rather than putting in the up, upper level. If you are lower spinal field, you just put the junction at L2, L3. 
so you can mark it every every junction shift you can put a uh, blue for the brain and uh, red for the spinal line uh, you, um, you can put every time every seven days you have to shift so how first plan you you did the first plan here so either forward or backward you have to shift so in the first day this be the plan in next day you increase the spinal field decrease the cranial field you can see in next is a junction shift you decrease the again cranial field and increase the spinal field so this thing has to be practiced first plan this one second plan 1 cm increase the 1 cm spinal field decrease the 1 cm cranial field and second increase the 1 cm cranial uh, spinal field decrease the spinal, uh, 1 cm cranial field so three junctions at the three um, after each seven fraction you can uh, do that so whether we are treatment is going regularly properly or not from the day 1 to day 7 or day 1 to day uh, total days you see the position and it is a checklist alignment of the laser gap between the mask and head any shoulder gap leg fit position lower border of cranial field upper border of spinal field should be marked and gantry rotation collimator rotation couch rotation ssds everything should be ticked and uh, put the marker and this should be hand of the technologist or the setup doctor who can do the proper setup this checklist will uh, decrease your daily errors again spine spine field with the lower spine and upper spine again same thing you have to see and uh, you have to see the couch uh, you can see here column my uh, lat, uh, collimator couch is the rotated ssd is 93 again uh, this is the um, collimator and couch when so upper spine field lower spine field also you have to see the what collimator what country what couch everything you should monitor properly and this format you can practice at your uh, institution sometimes people think that extended ssd will help uh, uh, extended ssd will help uh, so when there is a uh, people trying to one 110 cm or 120 cm of ssd but if you increase the ssd the depth dose increases so if depth dose increases the esophagus liver lung heart gonad everything increases so usually if there is a uh, data is there uh, 105 110 can ssd you can go ahead but uh, um, uh, 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 120 ssd 1 um, 0 115 ssd better to avoid extend ssd should not be done what dose now whole neuro axis dose the total dose is inclusion of whole neuro axis dose and boost dose and the whole neuro axis plus boost dose is high risk population you give uh, csa of 35 gray boost 19.8 gray and total 50.48.8 gray low risk you can go for 23.4 gray and boost around 30.6 gray total 50.54 gray but if there is a leptomeningeal metastasis at the diagnosis you can go higher dose of 39 6 40 around 40 gray boost Till 54 gram or 50.5.4 gram. If there is a nodular metastasis are there, you can give extra dose around uh, 5 to 5.4 to 9 gram in the 3 to 5 fraction. You can give medications mostly antiemetics on non certain require. You have to start from the day one. Steroids you use the person antiemetics is for the need. Weekly CBP best to be done. must be done hemoglobin double wish count tetrachloride count keep the boost plan ready when the patient develops because it is a total bone marrow irradiating and giving chemo keep the boost plan ready if there is a neutropenia started or thrombocytopenia you uh, in between you plan the boost plan and uh, and even if there is a csi planning is taking time uh, so get ready for the boost and treat the boost then plan the csi how to handle myelosuppression at least more than 1000 neutrophil count should be there platelet transfusion uh, should be, uh, not necessary be, unless there is a grade 3 or worse thrombocytopenia but, but maintain the platelet count more than 50000 during csi using steroid of the treatment um, t- during treatment unless there is a intracranial uh, uh, intracranial uh, pressure raised and intractable delayed nausea and vomiting you can use the uh, steroids concurrent chemotherapy weekly vincristin weekly carboplatin whatever you plan either concurrent vin carboplatin or vincristin discuss with your medical oncologist and treat boost plan should be local and or whole boost posterior fossa so in this situation you should leave the cochlea and leave the peritoneal pituitary so mostly at least 1 cm above the uh, tentorium to include the posterior fossa it may be seen in the mri 
posteriorly in the, uh, in the outer skull, one below one centimeter of the below skull bar foramen magnum, end of diaphragm cell, uh, posterior diaphragm of the um, 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 uh, diaphragm of the uh, uh, posterior diaphragm. So, if you this is the usual field we did treat and uh, um, yeah, or uh, you want to pull, if there is you're not able to find out the tentorium properly you can put the uh, midpoint uh, midpoint of the uh, one centimeter above between midpoint of the vortex and foramen magnum so one centimeter above you have to put tumor bed boost if you are going for the tumor bed boost gtv should be tumor bed and mri ctv gtv plus one 15 mm ptv plus ctv plus 3.5 mm modified at cella so this is the evaluation of the 2d field then uh, visitor field, then arc field, uh, IMRT field, then starting from the total conformal over the TD2 tumor bed boost. Then these are the OIRs, pituitary, eyes, lens, everything is OIR in the pediatrics. Try to dig the decrease the OIRs. So sometimes confusion comes. Where to where should I put uh, what to what should be the vertebral dose? All vertebra should be included in our uh, ma, 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 dose system. Remember, if you are giving 35 gray, anterior vertebra, this dose fall should not be suddenly or should not go more. At least anterior vertebra should go at 20 gray. If you are keeping it the 23 gray, your till anterior vertebra should get 18 gray. This is the protocol uh, 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 from the SIOP guidelines. Uh, the total, don't, if you have a VMAT plan or IMRT plan, don't abruptly stop the dose because there will be a scoliosis in future. At least your body, if you are giving 35 gray, 100 body are getting the 35, uh, 20 gray. If you are giving 30, uh, no, 23 gray, at least keep the vertebral dose till 18 gray. So this, if you are planning for a VMAT, usually this article, you can go through it full field for cranium, uh, total arc and spine, you can go for the uh, posterior arc, small arcs around the spine, not the full arc for the spine. And you can see the uh, 3D CRT plan, the, uh, there is a less spillage in the lateral part, but the anterior spillage is more. But in VMAT plan, lateral spillage is more and anterior spillage is less. Though if you see the 3D CRT plan and comparing to the BMAT plan, 3D CRT definitely cord, uh, cardiac dose will be more, thyroid dose will, will be more because anterior spillage and uh, lungs will be more in the BMAT plan, kidneys will be more in the BMAT plan, liver will be more in the plan. Uh, so this is very uh, tricky things which uh, you have to keep in mind uh, when you are planning BMAT plan. So if you are planning have a tomotherapy, it is a very good thing. Uh, uh, there is no junction uh, required. And uh, these are the various tomo plans, uh, uh, comparing the tomo plans and uh, this is linac based plan. Either you plan tomo or plan linac based, keep the vertebral dose as per the recommendation. Don't abruptly stop the dose. If you are planning 35 gray, keep the total vertebral dose 20 gray at least. So this is a comparison of tomo plan and uh, linac plan. So I'm not going through details, definitely ma, 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 integral dose and spillage dose is more with tomo plan. Uh, in the laterally comparing to the uh, way uh, then. In summary, CIC is needed to in medulloblastoma. You can plan with 2D, 3D. Daily setup is needed. Weekly jump is fine. If possible, plan with VMAT or TOMO. In TOMO, no junction required if treatment length is 130 cm. If not sure about molecular profile, plan with the, uh, 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 not standard, sorry, wrongly written here. Uh, you, uh, so high risk dose like 35 gray, minimum CSI. Still, Posterior fossa boost is the standard. You can plan. Um, in a, so when your confusion comes, when you're planning with BMAT plan, uh, when you are coming with B plan, BMAT plan, uh, so there will be two, three junctions. When you take three, two to three CVCTs or if it's there will be a junk, every setup there will be a longitudinal shift. So don't do the longitudinal shifts. Only shift the uh, shift the X, uh, X, Y. Only one cent junction you shift the longitudinal shift. In uh, other junctions you do the X and that's it, vertical shift and lateral shift. Plan concurrent chemo, send for urgent chemo to the medical oncologist. In follow up, uh, up uh, you have to do three monthly for the last first two years, six monthly for till five years, and annually thereafter. Contrast enhanced MRI and spine screening is recommended after 12 weeks of the completion of therapy as a baseline. 
routine imaging surveillance is not recommended but should be ordered if there is a neurologic worsening occurs and in later for late effects you have to ask for the pituitary uh, functions and uh, needed hormonal replacement should be done uh, thank you very much i am now going to tell about the uh, 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 how to plan it actually just what give me one minute just give me one minute i'm showing the how to plan it Hope my planning screening is visible here. Hello. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Okay. So everything you have to see properly. Uh, I will tell you four type of plans. One is the uh, junctional plan, half beam plan, DMAT plan, BMI, BMI with standard risk load dose plan. So if you see, I will show you the junction plan first. So as I told, so you have to you have to contour whole brain. You see, see the contour whole brain. This is a pressure of uh, supratendinal pinnet. It, it is not a medulloblastoma. That's why you also require a uh, scanner. You have to contour the whole brain. And even you are contouring the whole brain, always contour in the uh, 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 bone window, not in the brain window. This is the very go good line for uh, to understand. You don't contour the brain window, uh, brain in brain window. You should contour in the bone window. So if you see, if you put, uh, if there is a bone window, you can see the some uh, one. Uh, uh, if you don't contour in the bone window, there is a high chance of missing some areas of brain because in soft tissue window, there is a high chance of uh, missing, uh, always contour in the bone window. After that, you have to contour the optic apparatus, eye, then jugular foramens, ovale, foramen rotundum, foramen spinosum. So, uh, how you contour, you can see this is the uh, foramen rotundum, ovale and uh, uh, foramen uh, sp uh, spinosum so these are the these are this rotundum ovale spinosum so uh, this three put in a single line you can contour then you can contour supraorbital fissure infraorbital fissure so these are the uh, these are the optic foramens these are the super uh, sorry superorbital fissure infraorbital fissures then uh, Then you have to control stylomastoid foramens. 
not stylometer is not a, a part of it, but we just contour here. So if, if, if these things has to be keep in mind, you have to contour all these internal acoustic matters you have to contour. So you can see this, this is the internal acoustic matters you can contour here. Then these are the various spinal canals, uh, the foramens you have to contour. This is the uh, internal of stimulators. Then if you come down, jugular foramen, this is jugular foramen, this is the uh, hypoglossal canal, everything you have to contour properly. Then you have to contour uh, uh, this ethmoidal uh, uh, plate, you have to contour. Then, then after that, your field comes spinal canal. So again, I am telling you when you're contouring the spinal canal, you have to contour the in the bone window. Uh, sorry, uh, you can do the bone window. So, so you can this is you can see the spinal canal here. But if you slowly dive, this is the spinal intervertebral foramen. That has to be contoured properly. If you don't contour, it will be you are missing the target. So this has to be contoured properly. Again, again, you see. So every other slice, there is an intervertebral foramen. You can see. So you have to contour the intervertebral foramen. You have to contour the intervertebral foramen. After that contouring till you have to if you are an MRI go to the S2, S3 junks, S3 uh, middle border, or if you don't have a MRI, you, uh, uh, if you don't, um, uh, if you have MRI hyper, uh, one centimeter below the uh, thickal junction, if you don't have an MRI, uh, you can, you should go to the uh, S3 lower border level. Remember, you should contour the interventricular foramen. It, it is not like that. Uh, only spinal canal has to be contoured. So you do you cannot see this intervertebral foramen. If you see, I contour the soft tissue. You, you cannot see this uh, intervertebral foramen in the soft tissue window. So in the soft tissue window, there is a high chance of missing the intervertebral foramen. So always see in the uh, bone window. This is the one clue. Then you give the margin around one centimeter margin around the spine and 0.5 centimeter above the uh, cranium. So brain, you can give 0.5 centimeter as I given here the white, white is the one uh, 0.5 centimeter and spine, it is a one centimeter. Another thing it is comes the, uh, you can see, so junction one, junction two, junction three. So because the patient is a totally uh, thing, we have to put junction one, junction two, junction three. So these junctions I have to plan for first I will plan with junction one. After one week, I will plan to junction two. After one week and the second week, I will plan to junction three. So like spinal canal, spinal one, spinal one, so, so you have to put it properly. So and this is the uh, mo mo mostly about the contouring. And uh, then if I plan for the junctional plan, let's see the open the junctional plan. So you can see here, and uh, so this is the cranium field, lower border. This is the spinal field, lower border. So here, if you see, I have given a collimation of 10 degree. If I don't give collimation, if I enter zero degree, how it is overlapping? So always you have to match with the sagittal section. Then you have to match. If you uh, the sagittal section matching is not sufficient, you have to match with the coronal section also. So So, so in this condition, if you um, uh, in this condition, you have to give couch degree. So if I put couch zero, you can see this is there is a overlap. So here you can put 10 degree couch. So you can see the there is a um, no overlap. So in this way, you have to try to match. Then then we will go to the upper spine and lower spine. So this is in this condition. You have to um, uh, um, so this is the upper spine and lower spine junction because this part is not covered by the single spinal field. So you have to give the upper spine and lower spine. If you give, don't give uh, couch ninety degree. So if suppose I am getting zero degree and country uh, um, zero degree, there will be. Um, and then um, there will be uh, no, this. Uh, um. 
So you can see this divergence of these beams, and you can see this is there is a overlap here. So this overlap you can how can you make me by Ganty rotation? You can give this Ganty rotation, and you see the how the it is matching with some. Okay. So yeah, the more another thing you are giving the multi leaf collimator MLC for the spinal field, MLC for the cranium field. So when you are going for beam matching it to the your uh, setup level. Always use the open field matching. Then, because final uh, if MLC field you cannot do. So where we you can see here um, uh, setup field MLC field set, you can see the uh, setup fields junction one, junction two, and junction three. If I show this junction one, so. So this is the how the craniospinal irradiation it looks like, and uh, you have to see. Um, so this area maybe laterally you are going giving, but uh, there is uh, if you go then you can go for the spinal field. No need to go for the spinal field full dose to the vertebra. At least twenty grade should be uh, reach the anterior vertebral body. So this is the thing because it is a two D plan. So we were definitely there will be a um, problem. Um, we cannot get. Uh, we will spill it anteriorly. Sometimes the people may ask, what should be the junctional dose? Mostly we keep the junctional dose around sixty to seventy percent. The so um, you you can see here. This is the junction field sixty to seventy percent junctional. That's why to uh, improve the dose system, we just do the junction shift every week. Then we can uh, because because patient is a uh, supratendinal uh, uh, supratendinal tumor, so it is a like embryo, it is embryonal tumor. So we what do you do? We give the uh, uh, do the, we did the MRI uh, few, uh, you, you, we do the we did the MRI fusion and we plan for the uh, with 1.5 centimeter margin as well as the point uh, to be. Keeping the wear uh, at, uh, within the constraint. So this is uh, mostly about how to do the couch problem, uh, issue the couch problems and these things. Then I will tell you uh, how how the BMAT plan looks like. So you can see the this is the total uh, um, this uh, rounded field is for the cranium, but uh, you can see the spinal field. Spinal with simple small arc. Uh, behind the uh, spine, it is the spinal cord. So spinal canal, you should uh, you should not uh, uh, for spinal cord, uh, you should not go for the uh, total arc. It, this is the spinal field. You can see the small arc behind. You no need to go for the full arc. And you can see here, this is the thing. What the next next thing comes here? How much dose your vertebral dose, vertebral anterior vertebral dose should get? So in the spine. This is our PTV, and it is getting 35 gray, and this yellow is 20 gray. So, if you are planning for the 35 gray, keep the anterior vertebral dose still 20 gray to prevent the scoliosis in a future in a pre-pubertal people. If you are planning less dose, uh, like uh, um, uh, less dose planning, and uh, suppose you are 23 gray, you should keep the uh, anterior vertebral dose 18 gray. This is the very important to prevent the scoliosis in uh, uh, um, growth children. So this is the thing I, uh, I want to tell you about the practical aspect, the aspects of CSA plan, CSA plannings and uh, uh, hyperfractionation schedules and everything. I don't practice and I have less limited data. I don't want to go to the clinical trials and other things. Uh, hope you understood and any any time you can call me and uh, uh, this the. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, your kind attendance. Any questions? Any questions? You can ask me, and uh, I am here. Uh, sir, I have one thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what about the imaging protocol you will follow while executing the treatment? During the treatment? Yes, during the treatment. So I I I I follow the MRI uh, from from the vertex to um, till coccyx um, or at least mid thigh. Treatment verification imaging. Treatment oh. verification. 
treatment verification imaging. So if you are doing 2D planning, you can go for the AP. Or if you have a CBCT, you are planning to say BMAT, you can go for the CBCT. Or if CBCT is available, you can go for the CBCT, no problem. So that means you are going to be crossing the both the fields, like brain, uh, like brain and as well as the spine. The, the problem comes when you do the cranial uh, junction field, there is a XYZ uh, difference will be there. Yes. Again, if you go to the spinal spinal field, the XYZ difference will be there. So don't change the uh, first, you see the single single center, you change the uh, uh, longitudinal shift. Uh, XZ you can change, but uh, why only you have to shift in the one junction only? Okay. Then it, that, that will be your uh, object because if you shift to uh, two junctions, um, um, though there will be some erroneous will be there because uh, when uh, treating the cranium spinal junction and treating the there is slightly cause divergence will be there. Thank you. Sir, so talking about uh, dose to the anterior vertebral body, it could be a 20 grade minimum or it can be below that? No, minimum 20 grade. I'm, that's what I'm telling. If you are planning for 35 grade, 20 grade minimum should be anterior vertebral body. If you give less, I have a BMAT plan, I have a IMRT plan, I have a TOMO plan. Don't uh, try to decrease the dose, zero error the anterior vertebral body. You, at least you should give 20 grade. Otherwise, there will be a um, differential growth and patient having scoliosis. So for the patient uh, for whom they are using proton therapy, so in, the, in them, there is a sudden uh, decrease in the dose. No, yeah, so you should not use. You should not do that. So a minimum dose of 20 grays should be allowed to the anterior vertebral body. Nobody. If you are planning for 35 gray, if you are planning for the 23 gray, you should do, eight, anterior vertebral body should be go to 18 gray. Okay, thank you, sir. So I have got the two questions for you, sir. One is that to ask, like, what is uh, your uh, uh, ovary dose constraints for a female patient? So ovary usually mostly come in the lateral field size, lateral field, usually not, not in the central, and it should be kept less than two grays, you know, alara principle should follow. Okay. Second question is that uh, if you have a recurrence of a tumor for CS irradiation patient, okay. which comes over for a year later, uh, what is your uh, policy? Sir? Okay. So, uh, uh, so you have to again restaging properly. You have to do some research study, spine MRI, everything you have to do. After that, uh, if there is a small localized, you can go for the uh, localized RT. Or if it is multiple meds, the re radiation data is uh, uh, very much uh, not clear to me, but we have to see the local possible. Sorry, I am not audible, sir. I am not audible. Somebody is interrupted. So, ah, yeah, yeah. Again, sir? so, two things. Sir. One thing is that uh, whether it is a multiple patchy uh, recurrences or single site recurrences. If single site recurrences, you can go for the local RT followed by chemotherapy is a must. If it is a, but you have to see the day, uh, what is the time gap between the radiation, uh, prior radiation and now radiation. In the multiple sites, if you are giving 23 gray, we can plan again. If there is a good delay, you can go with more, uh, another uh, good dose with uh, keeping the spinal cord dose. If there is a intracranial single dose lesion is there, you can go for the SRS. But uh, all are the physician patient preference. It is not a uh, written what to do. Thank you. Uh, what somebody asked what immobilization you need recommend ideally i use uh, head you have to immobilize in the mask only backlog immobilization the head is not possible because there will be rotation uh, uh, orbit plus backlog or single two orbits concurrent chemotherapy i use usually vincristine and uh, some uh, good uh, data also concurrent carboblading uh, uh, and uh, and any other thing uh, any other uh, questions you can uh, uh, you can ask or you e email me uh, or you can chat with me. Uh, okay, I, I think uh, any questions you can ask or we close the session. No 
you have people uh, you people have enjoyed the uh, my talk and presentation i might have got some clear about uh, your uh, uh, doubts and uh, never uh, forget to give the feedback and uh, accordingly we will improve ourselves him for all is uh, uh, somebody is asked uh, spinal epidemia we will go to 50 to 54 grip and somebody asked why there is x y z shift we do only longitudinal shift with three eye centers so if you are telling the cbct uh, sometimes two junctions put and uh, one junction you should go for the longitudinal shift because it is uh, overlapping and uh, sometimes uh, this is, this problem happens uh, you cannot correct it so always keep one junction shift is sufficient uh, and it is the practically possible theoretically you have to shift every junction but practically you have to shift one junction only because uh, uh, there is might be uh, chances of overlap somebody has asked cranial field lower border uh, if, uh, if you keep spine cranial field should be good shoulder uh, shoulder clearance c4 c5 junction uh, or and no direct spinal uh, if you can prevent uh, spinal direct fit to thyroid and buccal mucosa is very good chemo for all is lower risk we no need to chemo for all is high risk population or uh, unless it is molecularly proven if you do molecular proven you can uh, omit the chemo or low dose you can go but uh, molecular uh, profile everywhere not possible so better go for the uh, um, chemo if there is no molecular proven so i uh, i taken some slides from the various articles some slides here and some people uh, i didn't uh, forget to mention about the names but uh, i am very much uh, uh, thankful to the google slides here and all presentations i have uh, taken the data uh, thank you very much i have here i am ending my session you can call me if you have any issues thank you sir thank you so much so we are concluding the session here Okay, thank you, ma'am, for thank the you. planet uh, for the giving the platform. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, and we are concluding here. Thank you so much, all the doctors, for joining in this session.